I have been asked by a fellow Mustang enthusiast to help determine how the thermal vacuum switching works on these Ford engines. I've got a three port thermal vacuum switch called a TVS and I have a two port one. I'm not worried about the two port unit. That's used for exhaust gas recirculation. But the concern here is this three port TVS and what is this behavior supposed to be? So what I have done is I've gotten a vacuum tester and a vacuum gauge and I'm going to be connecting them to this switch cold and maybe with the engine warmed up depends upon how it looks like this thing is supposed to behave. One behavior is such that the bottom port is attached to intake manifold vacuum. The center port gets attached to the vacuum advanced diaphragm on the ignition distributor and the top hose goes into the top port which is ported vacuum off of the carburetor which vacuum is only applied when the throttle blades are opened. So the two ways that this can be set up for function is either when the engine is cold, intake manifold is applied to fully advance the ignition time to help stabilize the idle speed and idle quality when the engine is cool. When the engine warms up, it shuts off the intake manifold vacuum and cuts over to ported vacuum. And so vacuum is only applied under light or medium load conditions with the throttle blades being opened. The other way these things are used is when the engine is cool or within a normal operating temperature, the ported vacuum will be sent to the distributor so that the ignition timing is altered based upon engine load. But if the engine starts to run too warm, this will cut off the ported vacuum and apply full manifold vacuum to the ignition distributor vacuum advanced diaphragm, which helps cool the engine down. I'm not sure which configuration this was set up for, so I'm going to test. But before I test that, I'm going to take off the hose from the vacuum advanced diaphragm, connect my tester, and I want to make sure this vacuum advanced diaphragm is working or is not leaking. I apply some vacuum and I see that the needle is holding steady. I'm going to go ahead and purge it. If I could not have pulled the vacuum or if that needle was moving, losing vacuum, that would show me that the vacuum advanced diaphragm is leaking or is ruptured. And often when I used to work as a technician, I had cars that would come in. I would almost always test the vacuum advanced diaphragm, especially if our customer came in for a tune-up or a complaint about poor fuel economy. And more often than not, the vacuum advanced diaphragm will have been ruptured, needed to be replaced. So I replaced it, took care of the problem. But anytime we get a car, an older one, I always take the time to go ahead and test the vacuum advanced diaphragm to make sure that it is working properly. In our 69 Shelby, I had to replace it. It was not working properly. So my fuel economy is probably five or six miles a gallon at the time. Once I put it on, with a new unit, our fuel economy jumped up to big whopping eight miles a gallon. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna plug in the vacuum test gauge to the center port, which leads to the vacuum vents diaphragm. The top port is for carburetor port of vacuum. So I want to see when the switch is cool, is it sending vacuum? And it is. 
So it looks like the configuration for this vehicle is such that cool and normal operating temperatures, ported vacuum is applied to distributor. If the engine starts running too hot, it looks like it would be manifold vacuum that gets sent down to the distributor vacuum vents diaphragm in an effort to help cool the engine down. I will see what happens here. Plugging into the manifold vacuum port, I apply vacuum, vacuum is being held, nothing coming through. So the switch is working in that way. Now, what I don't know is the thresholds of temperature when this TVS will cut from port of vacuum to manifold vacuum. The thermostat is designed to run 192 to 195 degrees so my guess is this switch will change, flip over from ported vacuum to manifold vacuum somewhere north of 200 degrees. I'm not going to intentionally run the engine hot like that just to see if that theory is holding true or not. I'm going to take a picture Linda took from the side of this. It has a part number on it or a base number. I'm going to see if I can figure out from there what the temp threshold is. So that wraps up that little test for today. I should mention that a lot of folks who don't know how these things operate, they will bypass the TVS and go from port of vacuum directly into the manifold or the, um, uh, uh, the um, vacuum diaphragm on the distributor. That will work. It'll work fine, just like this TVS works fine under normal and cool operating conditions. But it takes away the ability for the engine to go to full vacuum advance when it starts getting too hot. May or may not ever be an issue. Me, I'm not necessarily a purist when it comes down to emission control designs and engine controls, but this is one of those that actually like, um, PVC, positive crankcase, a PCB, positive crankcase ventilation system. Actually, they do more good than not. Nothing wrong with keeping the stuff in play. So I'm not going to go disconnecting things and modifying them on this setup. It's look, looking like it works. It works well. All right, time to put the toys away. I think I'm done. Okay. End of video.